Hi, Florence and the Medici family. So let's begin. And the wealthy merchant families of Italy, the wealthy merchant families of Italy play a huge role in promoting the Renaissance. Like the Medici family in Florence. And Florence is pretty much the center of the Renaissance, where the Renaissance happens. Families like the Medici family can be described as being both worldly and materialistic. They're both worldly and materialistic. What does it mean to be worldly? You have to be over the world. I would really define it as being just like curious about how the world works. How many of you would you say, really like to be around other cultures different than your own? How many of you, if you went like to Midtown Market and you see like other foods, other cultures, other religions, how many of you find that exciting? Like, I, like you like, you literally like to see it. You want to know. You want to know what that food tastes like. You want to know all these different things. That's worldly. So the Dark Ages, no. Renaissance, yes, a very worldly time wanting to know more about the world. All right? Materialistic would be best described as you like your stuff. And you want the newest and the best of everything. So someone who is materialistic, um, if it's a girl, uh, now you got to get the Michael Kors bag because the coach bags aren't in anymore. Does that make sense? No, no, now I need a Michael Kors bag. And I need the latest version of the iPhone in my Michael Kors bag so I can see it there. That's someone who's materialistic. Does that make sense? You want to put your name brands out there for everybody to see. See, see that MK there? Okay. Anyway, so that, and this is this year's model. Anyway, so <laughs> that is someone who is materialistic. And guys, pretend like they're not this way, but they are. Um, soccer players, I know i got to have the new CR9s. I have to have the new CR9, Christopher Ronaldo shoes that just came out. Those are the ones that, <laughs> CR7s, whatever, anyway. <laughs> All right, you got me. I'm wrong on that. I want to be CR7s. All right. So anyway, so one, once they start once they start winning trophies, I'll get the number right. Anyway. <laughs> when was the last time you lifted a trophy? Anyway. Anyway, so. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's, let's move ahead. At least he's better looking than Messi. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so let's continue. What was I talking about again? Oh, yeah. Materialistic. Materialistic. So you need the new shoes, like the newest model of the shoes, because you, know, you couldn't have last year's model because that just won't do. Like it makes your soccer game any better to have like the absolute latest model. That's also being materialistic. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So um, uh, the Italian merchant families are materialistic and worldly people, which means they like their products, they want the best, they want the new, and they want them from all over the world. And they're also curious about the world, how different places are. Do they have new technology? Do they have new things, new beliefs? That's the mindset of the Italian merchant families at this time. All right, so they also like to glorify themselves. They like to glorify themselves. And again, the Medici family... They are a family in Florence where they will sponsor artists like a Leonardo or a Michelangelo. And they'll even take them in. Michelangelo is an artist who is a poor, grows up poor, and the Medici family sees he has talent, so they raise him. They pretty much raise him and they give him everything he needs to do his art. And they do that for a lot of their patrons is what it's called. They basically like fund these artists who are coming up. But when they do it, they're kind of like, see that painting he made? We paid for that. They also like to glorify themselves and boast, name things after themselves too. Like, oh, that big, huge cathedral? Yeah, that was us. We built that. By the way, that is a way in history of how you show power. You build a big-ass building. And that shows that you have power because you can make that building. And it shows everybody, if we can make this building, we can do other things. 
All right, so Northern Italy, Northern and Central Italy is where um, there's large city-states in Northern and Central Italy. While the rest of Europe is pretty much more rural. Not everywhere, but it's more countryside in Europe, where in Italy there are more city-states. So because of this, there's more people, there's more exchange of ideas, more trade and business goes on, and these families bring in all the products, they sell it, they're in banking, and they're making a lot of money. The Medici, how they what? How they get so rich? Basically trading products, pirating, stealing from other areas, and banking. All three of those areas got them their money. Oh, I'll get to the Pope and the Medici family in just a minute. You'll, you'll like that part. I'll come back to that in about one minute. All right, let me get a few points across here. Now, the cities start growing in Italy and then other places as well, but something really horrible comes with trade too. Trade brings lots of good things. It brings knowledge. It brings art. It brings technology. People start talking ideas. But trade also brings disease because you, different diseases spread through boats and everything coming from different parts of the world. Black death. The bubonic plague starts to spread at this time. Black death, bubonic plague. What is that? It's called bubonic plague, black death. It's a disease that's spread possibly from fleas of rats that go along ships. Other people think it's more like the flu and it just spread through germs and virus by people talking to each other. Um, Ring around the rosy. It's about black death. Ring around the rosy, pockets full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. That is actually about black death in Europe at this time. Ring around the rosies was rings that people would get on their, I believe, eyes. I could be wrong about that. Pockets full of posies. They gave them posies because they smelt better and the people who had black death tended to stink. Um, ashes, ashes was how the color of their face would start to look as they die and we all fall down. Black death. Just ruined it, didn't it? All right. <laughs> this got, it just got creepy. It just got horror movie creepy all of a sudden. Anyway, <laughs> let's keep going. The Black Death in some cities, in some Italian city-states, kills up to 60% of the people in the city. That's a lot of people. In some Italian city-states, up to 60% of people die from Black Death, bubonic plague. In Europe, in total, one, possibly one-fourth to one-third of people die from the Black Plague. Black Death, bubonic plague, it's the same disease. One-fourth to one-third die in Europe. In cities, more people die, and up to 60% die in some Italian city-states. And this is horrible, but it does bring some good things. For example, there's less people. So if you want a job, you're more likely to get one. You can also ask for more money from your job because there's less people. In economics, we call this scarcity. When there's less of something, it becomes more valuable. So there's less people so they can ask more money, which means the average person has more money. So, and trading continues to expand and the merchant families grow. So more families, more citizens get involved in the trade, and the merchants gain power. Now these merchants gain power, and they don't get power because they're a noble, because they have a title. They gain power for the most part out of skill, because it's business skill. Well, that new steel ship. But anyway, but they also have business skill and some pirate. So what you see is in the society, it flips things around quite a bit. You have some people who may have been peasants at one time, and now have become wealthy families and are able to establish their money. Now they don't have a title. They're not the Duke of Northumberland or anything like that. They don't have a title, but they do have money. So the Medici family, let's go back to your church question. The Medici family knows there's nobles and the church and they have power. So how does the Medici family, they don't have a title, they're not the church, how do they gain influence with these groups? Well, what they do is, number one is, for the nobles, 
that's not really that hard. You find a noble who's kind of lost power, and you marry into their family. A noble who maybe doesn't have as much land as they used to, and you take your daughter or your, your son, and you have them marry into that family. Suddenly, your family now is has ties to nobility. And for the noble family, it made a lot of sense because they would be like, oh, now we have more money. That's how you take care of that problem. So you marry into that family. The church, how do you do that one? Well, we need church positions, so what should we do? Let's get some of our family members and let's get them in the church. So they're actually able to make some of their family members priests. And then you can move the wheels on that, spending money in the right places, and all of a sudden your family members are bishops, archbishops. And they start rising up in positions, and you don't have a problem with the church anymore. So when the Medici family is sponsoring artists who are making paintings of Greek mythology and showing those gods, the church didn't like it at first until there were many Medici mem family members in the church. So how high could the Medici family move up in the church? How high could they move up? <laughs> well, the Medici family actually took one of their family members who was a pirate, and again, didn't have a hook in his hand or one eye, but one of their family members who was robbing ships, and he became Pope Leo X. He became Pope Leo X. No, he was a horrible pope. <laughs> he was a corrupt, horrible pope. And actually, arguably, he, he might be the one most responsible when we talk about the Reformation later. We'll get to that later. But they're able to, basically, the Medici family has two popes, Pope Leo X, another one, Claremont, Claremont something, I'll, I'll look it up. But they're able to um, get Pope Leo X is a member of the Medici family who they sponsor. He's called the Medici Pope. That's some power, isn't it? Um, also, what the Medici family is able to do, they run the city of Florence like a dictatorship. It's technically a republic, but who's really in charge? The Medici family and the people around them. They also give, like we talked about, tons of money and they sponsor artists. It's a way for them to show their power. They can show their art. They can show their architecture, the buildings that are built. But it does help Europe advance because trade's going on. Education's increasing. We are going to watch a movie, which is also going to be linked on the website. It's going to be about Lorenzo the Magnificent and uh, one of the artists who he sponsors, Sandro Botticelli. So we'll watch that. That's also going to be linked in the blog. I should pause it here. Bye-bye, everybody on YouTube.